So about three months ago, Apple released the new 2018 MacBook Pros with the new Intel Coffee Lake CPUs. The 15-inch models had these new 6-core CPUs that were really powerful, as well as an incremental clock speed bump to the existing AMD GPUs, but that was it, right? It's just a clock speed bump, and really, it's virtually the same chip that's in the 2016 MacBook Pro, same Polaris architecture, pretty boring stuff, right? But now, three months into the 2018's life cycle, we finally got the Vega cards. Totally different architecture, uses the much faster HBM2 memory, and they're pretty cool, so I'm gonna start off with a quick review of the laptop, then I'll show some benchmarks and performance numbers with the Vega 20 GPU, and whether or not it's worth all of the upgrades that you need to get the Vega cards. So a brief overview of the 2018 MacBook Pro. Build quality is great and the hinge on the 2016 model has held up fantastic so far. The speakers get very loud and they have a really good amount of bass, still the best trackpad on any laptop. The screen is pretty good and now supports True Tone for auto white balance. Thermals are not that great and the port selection remains the same with four Thunderbolt 3 ports and a headphone jack. So overall, a pretty good laptop. I mean, if you ignore the price, then yeah, I think it's a pretty awesome machine. My biggest grip with it are the rather weak GPUs that Apple has put into their MacBook Pro since forever, pretty much. Like, once every couple months, I'll boot into Windows through Boot Camp and I'll play a couple games, but this thing just can't handle it. Well, newer AAA games at least. And to put this into perspective, the 560X that was the best that you could do just a week ago is weaker than a GTX 1050. I mean, that's pretty bad, right? But with this, the Vega 20, it brings it up to about the same tier as the 1050 Ti, if not better in some scenarios. So, I mean, it's not great, you're not getting a GTX 1060 in here, you're not going to crush everything at Ultra Graphics at 1080p, but it's a lot better than the 560X, and a good chunk of it comes from the HBM2 memory. Okay, so boring talk aside, here's how it performs. I put it through a couple benchmarks, and here are the results. In Geekbench 4 OpenCL, it got a score of 77,000, and in the Unigen Heaven benchmark on the Extreme preset, it got a score of 986 with 39.2 FPS. Now, unfortunately, I don't have a stock 15-inch right now to compare, so the best that I can do is my 2016 15-inch MacBook Pro with the AMD Pro 455. In Final Cut, which is what I use to edit my videos, I measured the time it took to export my iPad Pro review. The 2016 MacBook Pro did it in 1 minute and 30 seconds, and the new Vega MacBook Pro did it in 1 minute and 18 seconds. If you're a Final Cut user and you're working with regular H.264 or ProRes footage, I don't think it's worth the upgrade. Now, I also watched Dave2D's video on this and he uses Adobe Premiere, which normally prefers Nvidia over AMD cards, but performance on the timeline and exports were much better, like 40% faster export times and I think it comes down to the new HBM2 memory. As for games, I tested Shadow of the Tomb Raider as well as Doom. Tomb Raider ran at 45 FPS on medium settings and Doom ran at 75 FPS also on medium settings, both at 1920 by 1200 Doom was a little bit weird because even if I cranked it up to ultra settings, it still never dipped below 60 and ran at about 70 to 90 FPS on Vulcan. And just for fun, just for giggles, Doom at native 2880 by 800 ultra settings runs at 44 FPS. So judging from all of that, I guess it really just depends on what applications you're using because some will perform like 15 to 20% better, while others that really take advantage of Vega and the new HBM2 memory will perform up to twice as fast. So what I can say for sure is this, if you need a MacBook Pro and you're either an Adobe Premiere user or you do anything that's graphics intensive, this is a good option to get. And if you also want to play some AAA games on the side, the Vega 20 will get you good frame rates. So overall, it's got pretty good hardware. It runs up the laptop much better than before, but it still remains one of the most expensive laptops that you can buy. The Vega GPUs are actually only available with the more expensive $2,800 model, so you can't just take the base $2,400 model and add the Vega 20, which means the minimum that you gotta pay is $3,150. And that's heavy, right? It's an awesome laptop, it's still going to be my laptop of choice, but you gotta be willing to fork over a lot of money if you want it. So that's the end of this video and the end of this review. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hopefully you found it helpful and I will see you guys in my next video.